So now we're um, moving into sketch graphs, still trig ones, but this time we're adding a vertical translation to them. So let's see how they work. And they're pretty much the same, except you've got to then work out the x-intercepts. So we'll see how we go. So the first example here, y equals 3 sine 2 t minus pi on 4 plus 2, um, is actually the same as the example we did in the last, in 6f, except the difference is that, yeah, simply adding 2 to it. So we've got a, um, an amplitude of 3. Amplitude equals 3. Period was 2 pi on 2. 2 pi on n, so the n value is 2. 2 pi on 2 is pi. Just in case you've forgotten, that's where the 2 is. Um, you've got a phase shift. I'll use the word translation this time. I keep using different words on purpose. So the translation is equal to pi on 4, so pi on 4 to the right. And you've got a vertical translation of 2. Vertical translation equals 2. So if we um, do our sketch, the easiest thing to do there is Actually, I don't like where I've drawn that. I'm going to rub that out and draw that a little bit lower than that. There we go. Now, because the vertical translation is 2, I'm simply going to move that to up to here straight away. And just going to put a dotted line in there because that's like our center line of the graph. Now, notice the amplitude is 3. So if we go up 3, that will bring us up to five. So our maximum is always our vertical translation, plus or minus the amplitude. So plus gives you the maximum, and when you do minus the um, amplitude, you'll finish with minus one. <laughs> so our range is between minus one and five. Marking a couple of parts there, T. Now, this is a sine graph. We said the period was pi. <clears throat> So if we marked in pi, but look at the domain, it goes to 5 pi and 4. Break your period into four pieces. Half of pi is pi and 2. Half of pi and 2 is pi and 4. 1 pi and 4, 2 pi and 4, <clears throat> 3 pi and 4, 4 pi and 4, 5 pi and 4. Our normal graph would start from 0, but this one is not starting from zero, it's got a translation of pi and four, so it's starting from pi and four. And remember our center is not on zero anymore. So it starts at pi and four, and then it just follows the, the pattern for a sine graph. So it goes up, back to the middle, down to the minimum, and then back to the minimum again, uh, back to the middle again. And then draw in your shape. Mark in your endpoints. So your endpoints are pi on 4, 2, 5 pi on 4, 2. Um, pi minus 1 for your maximum, uh, for your minimum, sorry, and for your maximum, pi on 2, 5. Well, what about your x intercepts? Well, at this stage, um, these ones are going to be awkward ones to calculate, so I won't do them in this example. Um, I'll wait till we get down to example 22. Okay, um, let's have a look at B here. So very similar again, so just going through it quickly. The amplitude, amplitude's equal to 2. Period is 2 pi on 3. Translation is... That's the horizontal translation. Translation is minus pi on 3. And the vertical translation, vertical translation is minus 1. And I've looked at the domain already and I've seen it's between minus pi on 3 and pi on 3. So again, draw out your axes. Because the domain is minus pi on 3, I sort of need to draw my axis a lot more in the center to allow for the negative values in the domain. So there's your t values, there's your y. 
This time it's been shifted down one unit, the vertical translation, so that is it. That is at uh, y equals minus one. Not that you need to mark that in. It's, it's a dotted line to let you draw it, so not actually important. Um, going up with the amplitude of two brings that up to one. Going down with an amplitude of two brings that down to minus three. So your period was, uh, what was your period? Two pi on three. So remember, break your period into four pieces. So if I marked in two pi on three, half of that's pi on three. So half of that was pi on three, half of that is pi on six. So you're counting units pi on six. So we've got um, pi on six, pi on three, going backwards, zero minus pi on six, and then um, minus pi on three. And so remember where we started from with this one, we had to um, translate the graph back pi on three and it's a cos graph. So cos graphs start at the top. So it would have started at here and then followed the cos pattern. Um, so when we follow the cos pattern, remember our center line, of course, though, is at y equals minus one. So our first point is here. And next point will be there. Our next point's down here, here, and then at pi and three, we're back here. So draw in your graph, making sure you do nice little curves, and then label everything up because you've got endpoints. You've got um, minus pi on three, one. You've got zero minus three for the minimum and the next maximum and end point is pi on three one okay um that's going to move us down to the ones where we find some intercepts and so they'll just take a fraction more time one more step um, and we'll get into those okay let's do these ones with intercepts and hopefully i'll try and be a bit quicker um, amplitude is equal to root two. Amplitude equals root two. Period is two pi. And the vertical translation is one. No horizontal trans in this one. Vertical translation equals one. So draw your little graph out, draw your axis. Because the vertical translation is one, then I want my, I want to be centered sort of, you know, the X axis, not in the middle, a little bit low. So there's X, there's Y, put in um, an amplitude of one, not an amplitude of one, a vertical translation of one. Um, the amplitude's root two, so when this goes up, root two is about 1.7, uh, 1.4, 1.41, so, that is here will be one plus root two and down about there will be one minus root two okay it's period is two pi so mark in two pi mark in we know we've got pi there we know we've got pi on two we know we've got three pi on two it's a sine graph Sign graphs start in the middle and go up. So it does that, 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 down to its minimum down here, and then back to the middle. So there's our, our graph, label it up. Y equals root two sine X plus one. Mark in the minimum. 3 pi on 2, 1 minus root 2, mark in the max, pi on 2, and 1 plus root 2. But now we need the x-intercepts. 
So let's do those. X intercepts. So at the x intercepts, y equals zero, of course. So root two sine x plus one equals zero. Root two sine x equals minus one. Scroll up there. Sine x equals negative one on root two. X equals sine to the minus one of minus one on root two. So remember your triangles. One, one, root two, pi on four. Always do the positive sine to the minus one of positive one on root two equals pi on four. Where is sine negative? And sine is negative in the second, in the sorry, third and fourth quadrant. So in the third quadrant, we use pi plus pi on four. And in the fourth quadrant, we use um, two pi minus pi on four. So pi plus pi on four is five pi on four. Two pi minus pi on four is 7 pi on 4. So come back in and mark in those um, x-intercepts there. So this value here is 5 pi on 4. And this value here is 7 pi on 4. Okay, that gives you the, the intercepts. Um, I won't do example B because that's pretty very similar just done on a cos one let's do uh, example C though that looks a bit more complicated so probably worth doing so C y equals 2 sine 2 x minus pi on 3 minus root 3 so we've got a fair bit going on in this one here okay amplitude is two. Period is two pi on two, so the number in front of the x is pi. Vertical translation. Is minus root three. And the horizontal translation is pi on three. Okay, so start your sketch. I'll just move over, give myself a little bit more room there. Nice vertical axis. It's going to be shifted down, so I'm going to put my axis slightly, my horizontal line slightly higher than I need to. Okay, so that's your, what is it, an x-axis in this one, and that's a y-axis. I'm going to mark in my vertical um, translation first. So um, a, just a dotted line will be good. At minus root 3. So that's minus root 3, that's your middle. Root 3 is about 1.7, so if we go up two units from there, that will be negative root 3 plus 2, or 2 minus root 3. And this one will be, if we go down the same distance, that'll be down here. So that will be um, minus 2 minus root 3. Okay. Now, remember, um, we've also been shifted across pi on 3. So the period for this is pi. So if we break pi into four parts, so if you break pi into four parts, so pi divided by four will be pi on four. So that's like our counting unit. And what I mean for our counting unit is we always break a trig graph into four sections and pi on four will be our counting unit. So this graph is going to start at, because it's got the translation of pi on three. So if I marked in pi on three here, 
remember it's a sine graph so it's starting in the middle so our middle is here where I put that little black dot and what we're doing is we're now counting by pi on fours now because pi on 3 and pi on 4 have a different denominator if we put them on the same denominator so pi on 3 which is our starting position if we make that on 12 that'll be 4 pi on 12 and our counting unit is pi on 4 so that's going to be 3 pi on 12 so you can do your these sort of major points really easily if you just work with your counting units. So we've got pi on 3. Our next, our next position, if you like, will be when we add um, pi on 4 to that. So that'll be 7 um, pi on 3 is 4 pi on 12. This will be 7 pi on 12. So if we add another 3 pi on 12 to that, that'll make that 10 pi on 12, which is 5 pi on 6. Our next one will be 13 pi on 12. And don't forget, if we'd actually been going backwards from, from and counted backwards, this is, this is 4 pi on 12, so our next one would have been you see it? Our next one would have been take away 3 pi on 12, makes that pi on 12. So our sketch starts at here. If I've got a pen, our sketch starts here. So um, remember it's a sine graph, so it goes up to here, up to the maximum, back to the minimum, back to the middle, sorry, now to the minimum. That looks good. Um, when we do our backward point, our backward point was at pi on 12, so that'll come down to the minimum there. And if we did have another point, it would be back about here, and so our middle would be there. So our graph would look like this. Starting to look like a sine graph there. Now, this period is actually out to 2 pi, so I haven't really gone far enough. So remember our counting unit is pi on 4, which is 3 pi on 12, so I can just add a little bit more. So if I've got, um, if I add um, to 13 pi on 12, if I add 3 pi on 12, I've got 16 pi on 12. So 16 pi on 12 is, um, 16 pi on 12 is something. I don't know, I just wrote 16 pi on 12. Obviously you can cancel that down. Fill that little dot in there. Our next one would be 19 pi on 12. I'm stopping when I get to 2 pi. 19 pi on 12. So that's up there. Our next one is 22 pi on 12. 22 pi on 12. Okay. So looking like this. 22 pi on 12 is back in the middle. And then we our minimum is going to be down here. And that's going to be at 25 pi on 12, which is after 2 pi. So we're really stopping here. All right. Um, now we need to get some x-intercepts. So let's get those x-intercepts. So you've got 2 sine 2 x minus pi on 3 minus root 3 equals 0. Sine 2 x minus pi on 3 equals root 3 on 2. I should be writing what I'm doing here, x-intercepts. So x minus pi on 3, 2 in front of the bracket, equals sine to the minus 1 of root 3 on 2. x minus pi on 3 equals, do your triangle, 2, 1, root 3. We want sine to be the opposite, so we're 
talking about that angle there, that's pi on 3. So sine to the minus 1 of root 3 on 2 is pi on 3. It's easy because it's a positive 1, where else is sine positive? That's the second quadrant. So second quadrant is um, pi minus um, theta, so that's pi minus pi on 3 makes it 2 pi on 3. Now, that's only going to give us, you can see this four x-intercepts, that's only going to give us two x-intercepts. So to get the other two, remember you've got to add two pi here. So if you add two pi, two pi is six pi on three, so that's seven pi on three. Two pi is eight pi on three. So now we divide by the two, you get x minus pi on three equals pi on six. Two pi on six. I'll cancel them all down in, in a minute. 2 pi on 6, um, 7 pi on 6, and 8 pi on 6. And then we add pi on 3 to each of them. So pi on 3 is 2 pi on 6. So that makes that 3 pi on 6, 4 pi on 6. So I'm just adding 2 pi on 6 to each of them. 9 pi on 6. 10 pi on 6, and of course you've got to cancel them down. So pi on 2, 2 pi on 3, 3 pi on 2, and uh, 5 pi on 2. Okay, so mark them in there. So we had pi on 2, no I'm about to go in black here, so we had pi on 2 there. We had 2 pi on 3 there. We had 3 pi on 2. And the last one we had was five, uh, 3 pi on 2. We must have 5 pi on 2. Okay. Um, it was, uh, that last one was not 10 pi on 4. It was 10 pi on 6. So it's actually 5 pi on 3. My bad. Make that 5 pi on 3 there. Okay, so you can see there's a fair bit of work in, um, in doing those. Um, I should go back and, and then actually label on all those maximums and endpoints, but I don't want this to go forever. All right, I'll leave you there with that. That will let you do 6G as well. Um, your trig needs to be good to be able to work sort of nice and quickly. So have fun.